morning everyone this is the beginning of what I hope to be many uh, vlogs in the month of June I'm excited about it because uh, I, I just been wanting to do this for a little while and I have a lot that I believe God has shared with me and put on my heart and I want to be able to do that and this morning I'm up at 7 a.m. because I want to run and so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to stretch go do a little run 7 a.m. and uh, yeah you ready? Now, I can't really hold this thing while I stretch I'm going to put you down until I get some of my other accessories and I won't have to do that no more so hold that dog alright so I'm all stretched out let's go for a real quick run I hope y'all are doing okay. I thought it would be cool if I could just document my life for one month so you can see not what it's like to be me, but just the world from my vantage point. It's a beautiful day on a Sunday morning. I'm a, Wednesday morning, June the 1st, 2016, a great year. Hope everyone's having, Dad did a lot of ministry in that center. Hope everyone's having a good morning. You'll find me a lot in there. That's the music hall, the Conley Ministry Center. That's where I go to sing and worship and to write. As you can see, I'm repping my Cleveland Cavaliers, the one and the only. Get some fresh air. Cause that's what I need. Just a little bit of fresh air. Take a nice breather. So what do you do in the mornings? Do you run? What's your routine? I learned that there's nothing better than having a good routine even if it's just small little stuff I'm gonna put this thing down and I'm gonna run for real so I'll hit you back in a minute okay so I just finished my running but y'all allow us running I just want to show you what I was seeing. This is the great campus of Ohio Christian University, but look how beautiful it is this morning. The sun coming up. God is good. I need to go do my cool down stretches but I wonder what do you do in the morning what do you do to you know get yourself charged and ready for the day I know for me this running thing works out pretty good just run a little bit get my body charged stretch and uh, get ready for work I'm just trying to make this 
make my days, you know, a little bit more uh, interesting and give me something else to, sh to uh, smile about. It's, I know some people listen to music, some people go straight to the weight room, that's not me. Although I do work out in the weight room, some people just uh, pray. I do do that uh, every morning. I wake up and I say, or I try to say every morning, wake up and say thank you, Lord, for, uh, you know, basically for putting me in my right mind, for giving me strength. You know, I'm going to talk about my grandmother a lot. One thing she used to say, without God, nothing is impossible. And I realized even just waking up in the morning, I can't even wake up in the morning uh, without him. And that is something... That's something that uh, you cannot trade. Only God can do that. And uh, for that, we're grateful. I'm grateful. So, yeah. I'm going to get myself ready for the day. I'm going to stretch out, get myself ready. What's up, everybody? I'm getting in my car, getting ready to go. The church house. Fifty percent of GOP voters could back Trump over church. Clinton. With more than seventy. I am excited. Uh, something I look forward to doing every week. So making it to the midweek service and worshiping um, is really encouraging. I hope. Your day was productive. My day was. Work was cool. Uh, it was Wednesday. I went from home. So I did get quite a bit accomplished. And I was glad about that. Now I told you all that I was going to church, but I didn't tell you which church I was going to. And I'm you are over the speed limit. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <clears throat> I'm not really over the speed limit. I'm going to uh, World Harvest Church of, Colum of Columbus, Ohio, where the pastor is Pastor Rob Parsley. I've been going there for quite some time now, since 2010. Wednesday fill up, you know. Even though this week it's kind of off because Memorial Day was Monday, so I really felt like today was a Tuesday when you know it's really Wednesday. I hope today is Wednesday. I have driven on this way to get a word from the Lord. You are over the speed limit. Okay, so let me tell you about that. My car tells me when I'm over the speed limit. Uh, but it doesn't give you that five mile grace period. And sometimes it's not calibrated. It needs to be updated to current streets and uh, other things that are with the GPS. So if you hear that noise, do not be weary. Know that I don't speed. I try to attend or go by the, the, the set for a speed limit not uh, be disobedient in that manner, in that regard. I'll tell you one of the, one of, uh, I'll tell you one of the things that I was thinking about this morning. And I was thinking about prayer. And, um, God has given me a revelation. I don't know if that's really a revelation or just, God spoke to me very heavily on 
heavy <clears throat> 2016. The beginning of 2016, I uh, began to study out some of the things that the Lord had shown me in 2014. And he had opened my eyes even more. I find it interesting how some saints have different opinions on it. But, you know, I'm not saying you need to sit there and pray for hours at a time. But I am saying that you need to pray often uh, and fervently. As long as you're praying and connecting. If you're not connected to the source, then how are you really um, getting your life? How are you getting what you need, uh, amen, to survive? Uh, Prayer is a way not only just to communicate to uh, your thoughts and your mind to God, but for him to communicate his thoughts and his mind to you and his heart to you. Um, I'm a firm believer that uh, the world will know that Jesus is alive based upon, you know, that connection that we have when we come out of that prayer. Um, you know, when Moses went to meet God, he went to the mountain uh, and he met God there and when he came back he had to cover himself uh, with a veil because his face was so uh, illuminated by the presence and the glory of God and that I feel like uh, something that we can as we think about approaching God something that we can take note of uh, within our own walk uh, with the Lord and uh, really know that God, uh, God, we can have that same experience, but we have to connect with Him. You are uh, over the speed limit. And I think that that's part of the reason why the church, as a church, we don't have the power that we once carried because um, we're not as connected. And that's why I need... Um, people say, you know, you don't need that, you know, I, and I'm a fir firm believer that the four, the church is not the four walls, you know, uh, there's a lot of buildings named church, but the church is the body of Christ. Um, and that, 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 that is the reality. I think some people have been banned. You are over the speed limit. I, I'm sorry for this noise in the background. You've been bam bamboozled and swindled into thinking that church is this four wall construction. And really, church is you. Uh, at the end of the day, the church is you and I. And we must uh, come together and make something. Uh, not make something. We really don't have to make anything. But we need to come together as a unit. Uh, and I guess that would be essentially making something because when you come together as a unit, you become and form the body of Christ. Each part, each member has a duty and a responsibility. And unless everybody is flowing um, uh, like like we should together as one, one unit, uh, I told you that I'm a, a director at a university. And part of my job is diversity. And uh, I went through and I'm starting to prepare for next year. Next year's theme is together in harmony or in other words, together in unity. Um, there's something that happens when one body comes together and everything begins to function as it is. We have, uh, as, it, as it should be, we have a, a, a much stronger uh, bond when we're com coming together. And there are times for us to uh, do, you know, what we're functioning to do. You know, every time the hand moves, the other hand doesn't have to move. You get what I'm saying? But, you know, to form the body, we need to come together in harmony. But uh, going back to connectedness, I feel like being connected is just an important part of a believer's life. And I want to talk about prayer at some point, 
on a more in-depth level um, because I think it is important, uh, very vital to uh, the life of a believer. And I'm almost to the church house, so anyway, there was my two-minute rant on being connected and uh, unity in the Bible. Because it's not just important for us to be connected uh, just to God, but we need to be connected to one another. There is a major, major, major part uh, in also uh, having unity with God, being one with God, but being one with each other. We are called to do both of those things. And um, some, some churches uh, have it together, and others, uh, some believers have that together, and some don't. But we need to be patient with one another and, and love one another and let iron sharpen iron, really. Work together uh, as we move forward in this thing called life. It is our main goal to bring about change um, and hope in a world that is dark and in a place that has no hope. The world is, is dim. And I also said, you know, if the world becomes dim, if, if, if the church becomes dim, as if believers become dim, how dark really is the world? All right. Well, made it to the church. Look at that. World Harvest Church. Someone's in my parking spot. <laughs> like we have a signed parking spot. But anyway, I hope that you had a productive day. I hope that you were blessed. I hope that God um, spoke to you in some way, shape, or form. Um, but I was thinking about that this morning, about just that connected feeling. Um, how once a a, a a piece of fruit is disconnected from the vine, um, it can live. It can sustain itself. Like if you take an apple off of an apple tree, it can live, but only for so long. And uh, that's the way we are. You know, we think we can we, we can do it because we can get disconnected and we can survive. But we will only be useful for so long. But when, uh, you know, he is, we are, he's the branch, you know, he's the vine. You know, we are the branches. He's the vine, we're the branches. If the branch is cut from the vine, or if the vine is cut from the branch, uh, it doesn't have much long, much life in it by itself but when it is connected it has life um, so yeah think about these things and I'm going to expound on that at another time but right now I'm going to get ready to go to church because it's time for that fill up amen okay so I finally made it home from church and um, church is really good. I cannot remember or recall the preacher's name, but uh, the sermon was based off of Acts chapter 1, talking about like um, oh, how in Acts 1 8 um, the apostles were going to be sent out to Samaria, Judea, and all the earth. They, that they would receive power when the Holy Ghost came upon them. And um, he made the point that before there was a promise, there's always like this this conditional moment or the mo or time of instruction, and they were told to wait, um, and it was not just any kind of waiting; it was active waiting. They were praying uh, for something to happen, and when they did, their faith is what made um, made that X one eight happen for them. And uh, it was a really an on time word for me, a word that I needed to hear. But uh, I really did enjoy a uh, service tonight. Really encouraged me. Of course, I'm uh, checking up on CNN. Uh, I don't know. Some people get weary of Christians who watch the news. 
But uh, I enjoy watching the news uh, for two reasons. One, I get to stay informed. And two, I know what to pray for and who to pray for. <laughs> Amen. That is all for now. And I guess I will see you tomorrow. Peace.